This will be a tutorial on a variation of the Boyer-Moore pattern matching algorithm. It's a variation because we didn't employ one of the heuristics called uh, the good suffix rule, but we're using the bad character rule. And um, we're going to get a much better running time than the uh, brute force method, although this could uh, be improved with the uh, good suffix rule, but we'll see how the good suffix rule works when we work with the Newth Morris Pratt pattern matching algorithm in the next video. For now, let's look at this variation of Boyer Moore. So the two heuristics it uses are used to skip unnecessary comparisons between text and pattern. So it knows that making these comparisons is it will be impossible to turn. Uh, a match out of those comparisons. So it doesn't bother making them and it saves a lot of time. So the first heuristic is that we begin comparisons from the last character in the pattern and move backwards. In the brute force method we started with the first character and moved forwards. Pretty intuitive. Now we're going to start at the last character and move backwards. The second heuristic is that if pattern character A mismatches with text character B, right, you get a mismatch. If B from the text does not appear anywhere in the pattern, then we're going to shift the pattern completely past B. Otherwise, we're going to shift the pattern to align B in the text with the last occurrence of B in the pattern. Here's a visual walkthrough. So, uh, this is our text and this is our pattern. So, we're comparing from the end of the pattern and working our way towards the front. So we compare S and N. They're not equal. Is there any S in our pattern? No. So we're going to shift all the way past that S. So now we're into this space here, comparing with T and all the way up here. So now we compare E and N. Well, it's not a match, but do we have an E in the pattern? We do. So we're going to line up those E's those E's are now aligned. And so the next uh, is we're going to compare this T with this N. Not a match. Do we have a T in the pattern? We do. So let's scoot the T up. Um, so now we're lined up here. We're going to compare T and N. Uh, it's not a match, but we know we have a T, so let's line those up. Don't forget these spaces, right? T, space, M, a. So we have A and N, not a match, and there's no A in the pattern, so we'll skip ahead past A. Uh, N and space don't match. There's no space in our pattern. We're going to skip right past it. And the same thing, no space, skip right past it. Uh, here we got <clears throat> N comparing with T. It's not a match, but we do have a T in our pattern, so we'll align those T's. And so N and N is a match, R and R is a match, E and E is a match, T and T is a match. That's the end of our pattern. So that's a, a full match right there. Here's the pseudo code. Um, so the Boyer Moore algorithm accepts uh, a string and a pattern, the, the text and the pat and the pattern strings. Uh, also, in the description, I'm going to put a Java implementation, uh, a link to it in the description. This is pseudocode, obviously. So we uh, initialize our i and our j to uh, m minus 1, where m is the length of p and uh, n is going to be the length of the text later. So we're going to uh, initialize those. And then we have this do while loop where we, if we get a match, this is if we get a match, if we've sort of exhausted our pattern, bingo, we got a match. We've Because we're going to subtract one from I and one from J, right? Uh, we have a match, bingo, subtract one from each. Now we're comparing the R's and R's. Bingo, subtract one from this, one from this. And uh, I is going to iterate over our text and j is going to iterate over our pattern right and so like if j is zero that means that we've gone all the way to the start of our pattern now if we don't have a match 
There's two small functions here, and I did write them for the Java code. Min, it's just comparing two integers and returning the minimum one of those. So we have j and this thing here. Those are the two integers we're passing to min. And we also have last. And last is going to re, uh, it's going to be the index number of the last occurrence of a character in the pattern. So the index number of the last occurrence of t in the pattern is zero because it's only once. If we put t at the end here, it would be zero, one, two, three, four, right? So that's what this is. So anyways, if we make a comparison and they're not equal, like we saw many times, we're going to change what i is. i is going to be what it was before, plus the length of the pattern, and then minus the minimum of either j or 1 plus the last, uh, the index of the last occurrence. That's a lot to, that's a, a dense code to understand just from me talking to you, but uh, we're going to really understand it in the, in the next slide when we get into a more difficult example. We'll have to use this. So we'll come back to this and this will become very clear how it works. I know it's dense just talking about. Um, and then we're going to just reset J to looking at the end. That's the pattern. We're going to reset the pattern. We're looking at the last thing again. And uh, anyway, we'll do this for a while. And if we don't find it, we'll just return minus one, not found. So we'll talk about the running time. And we'll show another example here that's more difficult. You can't really use those things we talked about on the first slide, like uh, either slide all the way past or align it with you know, the last occurrence. It doesn't work for some cases. I'll show you why. So the text contains n characters and the pattern contains m characters. We'll suppose that. Then the running time is O-N-M in the worst case. Most times it's going to be way better. This is the same worst case as brute force, but most times it's going to be miles ahead. Streets ahead. Uh, consider the text six A's and the pattern B A A. Okay, and I've just highlighted here this section of the code. This this is what's going to happen when we don't make a match. Everything else is pretty easy. We make a match. Okay, let's just scoot backwards or return that we're done. This is the little bit difficult part when we don't make a match. What are we going to do? So let's look at this worst case. Worst case Ontario. So here it is, six A's and B A A. Remember we initialize these to be the length of the pattern minus one, because we're just like we did. We're we're starting from here. We have a match. That's good. So we're going to subtract. Right. We're going to scoot these back. That's what we did in the code. Um, subtract one from I, one from J. Another match, subtract one from I, one from J. Now we have a mismatch. So what do we do when we have a mismatch? First we reset I, and I is going to be equal to what I was, it's zero, plus the length of this, which is three. So, so far we're at zero plus three, we're at three. And then minus the minimum of either J well, j is at zero. That's probably going to be the minimum right there. Uh, or the last index of the index where the last occurrence, 0, 1, 2. The last occurrence of this in this is at 0, 1, 2. So obviously, the 0, j is less. So we've got 3 minus 0, so that's 3. Um, so i is going to be 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. And then what we did with uh, j was we just reset it to be the length of this minus 1. So j is going to be here. Um, yeah, there's our mismatch. And there we reset it. So like, like we said, i is here. j goes back to the end of this. And we're comparing i and j. So that's why we scooted this forward. Now let's see what would have happened if we tried it the way that we sort of talked about earlier. So we have a match, we have another match, and now we have a mismatch. So 
we see is this in this? Oh, it is. So we'll align the last occurrence of this with this. We'd be like moving backwards and it wouldn't make any sense. So sometimes you're going to have to look at the code or at least look at that section and figure out what to do with your what to do with your uh, eye and how you're going to how you going to advance from here so you can see that this is going to be n times m because we're iterating through all of the pattern we checked a we checked b and we did a compare a a and we did a comparison with b so that started with i at 0, 1, 2, index 2. Now the index is 3, and we're going to have to do the same thing. And so we're going to scooch ahead 1 forwards in the, in the uh, text each time we do that. And each time we do that, we're going to look at all of this. So it's, it's, the, it's uh, the length of this times the length of this. That's the worst case. But like I say, it's going to be rare, especially in English language, it's going to be rare to come across something like this. Most times you're going to get a wicked fast uh, algorithm. So that's our variation of the Boyer Moore. And uh, check out the Java code in the description. That'll run for you. You can play with that. And just think about the code a little bit, and we'll be back with uh, Nuth Morris Pratt.